Welcome to Genetic Counseling Awareness Channel with Katie Lee. All the best resources you'll ever need at Genetic Counseling Awareness Channel. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's me, Katie Lee CGC, and today I've got a new type of video for you. It is about a hot topic in genetics and genetic counseling, polygenic risk scores. This video is part of a collaboration with Rachel Silva Smith and Dina DNA, two other genetic counselors you can find on social media, including YouTube and Instagram. So go follow them. I'll post links down below. You can also find Dina DNA on TikTok and on Clubhouse. Today, we are each releasing a video on polygenic risk scores or PRS, and we're each coming at the topic from a slightly different angle. So you'll want to check out all of our videos. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe here and ring the notification bell so you can be notified when I release new videos. If you scroll down, you'll find the link to Dina's video where she'll talk about an introduction to polygenic risk scores and really explain what it is with some great animation. And then you can also find the link to Rachel Silva Smith's YouTube video where she will explain how polygenic risk scores are being applied in a cancer setting. But I think I got the best topic because I'm talking about polygenic risk scores and how they can be applied in a reproductive medicine setting in terms of testing embryos for multifactorial conditions. It's fascinating, it's controversial, so you're gonna to wanna to stay here to learn more. Now, many of you probably know that in the world of reproductive medicine, we have been testing embryos for monogenic diseases, diseases that are caused by a single gene mutation like Marfan syndrome or cystic fibrosis for over a decade. We've also been testing embryos for chromosome imbalances or aneuploidy, which can lead to an increased risk for miscarriage or certain chromosome syndromes again, for over a decade. Those tests are referred to as PGTM, pre-implantation genetic testing for a monogenic disease, those would be our single gene disorders, and PGTA, pre-implantation genetic testing for aneuploidy. That's when we go testing for chromosome imbalances, aneuploidy. Now, in order to do this type of testing, testing on an embryo, we need a patient to utilize IVF, in vitro fertilization. Eggs or oocytes are retrieved and they are fertilized in a laboratory with sperm. The embryos that are created are cultured or grown for five or six days and then they're biopsied by an embryologist. That little tiny biopsy is labeled and sent off to a laboratory that can perform testing on these tiny embryo samples and a results released back to the physician who will share it with the patient and the patient and the doctor will decide based on these results which embryo is the best candidate for transfer to improve their chances for success and maybe to reduce the risk of passing on a hereditary condition that might run in their family or that their children are at an increased risk for. Now, these two tests, PGTA and PGTM, they have been met with some level of controversy in terms of accuracy, um, in terms of what are the chances of discarding a normal embryo if the testing isn't perfect. And also with PGTM, there's always the question of how mild of conditions should we really be testing embryos for and discarding embryos for? But today I'm talking about PGTP, pre-implantation genetic testing for polygenic diseases. This is the much more controversial stepsister to the other forms of PGT. And I'll explain why in a minute, but first let me break down what a polygenic disease is. Examples of polygenic diseases are things like hypertension, diabetes, most psychiatric diagnoses, depression, schizophrenia, um, heart disease, and I could go on and on and on because most common adult onset disorders are polygenic. So what does polygenic mean? It means that the disease is caused by a combination of many, many genetic factors and usually lifestyle or environmental factors as well. And it's thought that each of the genetic variants might cause just a tiny increased risk, or there's probably some variants too that cause the risk for a specific disease to be slightly decreased. And then there's ultimately going to be lifestyle factors that modulate your risk. Like if you think about cancer as a multifactorial disease, yes, we're all born with a certain predisposition to different types of cancers, depending on our genetic makeup, but our lifestyle, like whether we smoke or not, our diet, and many, many other factors, depending on the type of cancer, also modulate that risk. So it's complicated. Polygenic diseases are complicated. And for most polygenic diseases, 
we probably only identified a subset of the variants that go on to increase or reduce your risk for the disease. Now, if you want to learn more about how polygenic risk scores or PRS work, check out Dina DNA's video for this topic because she has some great visuals and goes into it in a bit more detail. But in general, by studying dozens or maybe even hundreds of variants, maybe in the future thousands of variants, um, polygenic risk scores are used to compare your risk to the general population risk for a specific disease and tell you if, based on all of those variants, you have an increased risk, an average risk, a decreased risk, maybe even provide a specific percentage of what your risk is compared to general population averages. So the way it would work to test embryos for polygenic diseases with PGTP, pre-implantation genetic testing for polygenic diseases, would be that you'd use a biopsy or a sample from each of the embryos to screen the embryos for one or maybe a handful of polygenic diseases. And with the risk scores, with those polygenic risk scores, you would be able to hopefully select an embryo that has a lower risk for a certain disease or for multiple diseases. And maybe this might be of interest to you if you yourself have one of those multifactorial conditions and it's impacted your life or your family member's life significantly and you'd really like to reduce the risk. Or you're just looking for a screening tool for your embryos to give your children, your future children, the very best shot in life. And as I tell a lot of patients that I counsel on pre-implantation genetic testing for aneuploidy, I think for most of us parents, one of our number one goals is to have healthy, happy children. And if there was a test that could guarantee us that, I think a lot of us would probably pay for it. But there is not. We are nowhere near being able to perform a test that can guarantee us that our children will be healthy and without disease. And PGTP is no exception. It's never going to be a guarantee that your children won't develop these diseases. It would be more of a ranking tool to select embryos and select an embryo that might be, the, might be at the lowest risk for a disease or certain diseases. PGTP has been met with quite a bit of controversy from the genetic counseling community. So I wanna get into kind of both sides of the story and my thoughts on it. So on one hand, I feel like as consumers, we should be able to access whatever technology is available. Um, as long as we're well counseled on the limitations um, and benefits of that technology. So even though using polygenic risk scores for embryo testing is really in its infancy, and we obviously still have loads to learn, if I as a consumer want to try to reduce the risk that my children suffer from a condition like diabetes or schizophrenia that me or a close family member has suffered for or I'm just worried about, why not? As long as I understand that the risk mitigation might just be a tiny bit. I kind of just think it's our freedom to choose what type of testing we want on our embryos. One of the concerns I have is that a lot of patients, probably most patients, end up using all or almost all of their embryos. They end up transferring most of them to build the family size that they're hoping for because not all embryos take. And a lot of embryos, depending on the patient's age, will have chromosome imbalances, which means that generally they're just not recommended for transfer. So when you think about the number of embryos remaining that are chromosomally normal for most patients, usually most patients just have enough, or maybe they don't even have enough. And how helpful is it gonna to be to have another ranking tool if you're planning to transfer all of your embryos anyways? Is it going to be useful to know that these embryos you transferred that re might result in your future children have this very slightly increased risk or an average risk for one or more multifactorial diseases? Mm. Now, on the other hand, there are a number of patients who have too many embryos. They have way more embryos than they know what to do with. And for those patients, I think, Another ranking tool could be really nice. Right now, most people rank their embryos based on other forms of PGT they do, most commonly PGTA, to find embryos that are chromosomally normal. And then they also look at the grade or the morphology of the embryo, how it looked under the microscope. Well, if you've got six beautiful embryos and you're hoping for a family of one or two children, it might be really nice to be able to use PGTP to rank embryos based on risks for certain diseases, some of these multifactorial diseases. Um, and I definitely could understand why some future parents would want to do that. One of the other things I think about is that for me, 
someone who, at least at this point in time, does not suffer from one of those multifactorial conditions, I just can't understand. I can't walk in the shoes of somebody who's been affected and how significantly it impacts their life. And I can't fully understand, you know, how important it might be for those individuals to test their future children, to test their embryos for these conditions. And I don't know that I would want to limit the availability to test for these conditions because I don't have that life experience. I haven't lived with one of these chronic diseases. And who am I to say you can't do this testing as long as you understand what some of the limitations to the testing are like that it cannot completely eliminate the risk for the disease and that lifestyle factors are still important and we still have a lot to learn and so forth and so forth. Now let's quickly talk about some of the arguments against using polygenic risk scores with embryo testing. The biggest one for me and the most interesting one to think about and talk about are the social, ethical, kind of social justice concerns around polygenic risk scores. Right now in the United States, IVF is incredibly expensive and most people do not have insurance coverage for fertility treatment, especially for IVF, let alone IVF with pre-implantation genetic testing. And that means that this testing would be limited to wealthy individuals. And that means that wealthy individuals could potentially reduce their risk for these certain types of diseases while poor middle-class individuals will continue to go on to have the same risk. So that's one concern. Another really important concern is that most studies that have identified these variants that increase our risk or decrease our risk for multifactorial diseases have been done on white populations. Therefore, the results of polygenic risk scores are most applicable to white populations. So for individuals of different races, polygenic risk scores may not apply or they may just be much less accurate. And that's a huge problem. This is a problem we see throughout medicine, throughout research studies, that a lot of times studies, including genetic studies, are done on white populations. And we need information about all populations so that all populations can reap the benefits of, of the outcomes of these studies. Another concern is how useful is this ranking actually going to be? If you were looking at, you know, five different unrelated individuals for some of these polygenic risk scores, yeah, each individual might have a, a fairly significantly significant different risk. But when you're talking about siblings with shared DNA, siblings are probably going to have just slight differences in their risks for certain diseases. Yes, differences and differences you could rank, but more slight compared to if you were looking at a bunch of unrelated individuals. So one of the big concerns is how much is this even going to reduce the risk for disease? And I think that's fair. We still have a lot to learn on that topic. And then finally, I think one of the other big arguments, and I've already touched on this one, to me this is a little bit of a silly argument, is that PRS is never going to eliminate the risk for these diseases. You know, things like type 2 diabetes, there are, even if you have the lowest possible polygenic risk score, I'm sure that by living a certain lifestyle, you could develop type 2 diabetes. You know, and that is a limitation that anybody who utilizes polygenic risk score testing should be well counseled on. That polygenic risk scores are measuring genetic risk based on variants, and that lifestyle factors still play a very important role. So I think it is crystal clear to me that if you're doing PRS testing, especially PRS testing on embryos, you need a genetic counselor who can walk you through risks, benefits, limitations, and make sure you understand the testing, especially the limitations of the testing and what it means in terms of what we know today in 2021. No genetic test is perfect, and that's what genetic counselors are here for, is to explain limitations, to make sure people are consented appropriately to the testing and can decide what testing they want to opt in or opt out of. So to me, this argument is a little bit silly because, yeah, there's limitations to new testing. Of course there's going to be. We still have a lot to learn, and that's okay. So what do you guys think about PGTP, pre-implantation genetic testing for polygenic diseases? Do you think that you would want to test your embryos for any multifactorial or polygenic diseases? Do you think it should be available? I would love to see you chime in below with your questions, your comments, your thoughts on polygenic risk score testing in embryos. And if you'd like to learn more, I want you to check out Dina DNA's video, which is linked below, and Rachel Silva Smith's also linked below. I'd encourage you to also check out ORCID. ORCID's website, that is a company that is offering polygenic risk score testing on embryos. They have a lot of great resources to explain how it works. 
they are offering testing for 10 different polygenic diseases. Um, and it's really interesting to learn more about. And I'll also include a couple of links to articles that argue against the availability of polygenic risk score testing on embryos. So check those out down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.